This video is going to illustrate how we do data mining with um, stepwise regression, ridge, and lasso. So it's based on a problem from James Witten Hastings Tipsharani's book, which is uh, problem 6.9. And so we have data on colleges. And uh, let's go read it in. I'm going to fix the row names and, and create the test set. So my R code is going to be available uh, from um, uh, Canvas. We're going to start by reading in Glimnet in the CAR library. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but when you use read.csv, you can specify a URL instead of um, the um, you know file name. So I'm just going to go right to the author's website and bring in the data. And so it's going to take a second to bring it in. Now we can do a head on it, and you're going to see we have uh, different things like uh, is it a private college, the number of apps, the number of acceptances, the number of enrollees, the number of kids from the top 10%, and so forth. Um, I don't want this first variable to be X, the college name. I'm going to make that the row names. So uh, I'm going to change that, then we're going to get rid of X. And if you want to see it again, now you're going to see that um, uh, the row names are uh, the col you know these colleges, and you have um, all these other variables. Now, let's talk about what we're trying to do. First, we want to predict the number of applications that a college gets. So that's going to be our dependent variable. And all of these other variables which are discussed in the book will be the predictor variables. Now we're not sure which ones work, so we're going to use data mining to find out. Um, let's go back to my instructions for a second, and you're going to see we're supposed to make a test set. And I think Hasty and Tipsharani maybe have said to make a 50-50 split or so. So what I'm going to do is just, um, you know, you can replicate this by having the same seat as me. We'll just assign every you know, uh, observation in this data set with a true or false value. So if, uh, you know, uniform random number is less than 0.5, it's in the training set, otherwise it's in the test set. You're going to see we have data on about 777 colleges, got about 18 variables. All right, let's go back to the um, instructions. How many cases are assigned to the training and test? Well, what we can do is just a table on train. So you're going to see roughly half, 352 got assigned to true, which means they're, we're going to use those to estimate the model. The remaining cases are going to be set aside as a test set. Uh, question three is, the dependent variables apps make a histogram comment. Well, what you can see is it's very, very right skewed. So uh, variance of this thing probably increases with its mean somehow, so we're going to need a variance stabilizing transformation. Regress apps on all the other variables, examine the residual plot and comment. So let's um, regress apps on everything else, so apps tilde dot means use everything else. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's, so, and then if I plot it, you're going to see the residuals look horrible. So we've got a lot of heteroscedasticity here, a lot of nonlinearity. So this is not a good situation. Um, all right. So what do we do? Replace apps with its square root as a variance stabilizing transformation. Now we could have used log, um, and you can see I've in my code I've actually uh, tried both. Um, I think they're both pretty good, so I'm not going to say that apps, uh, the square root is definitely better for apps than the log. Um, all right, let's, let's um, read on. So full model. So what we should do with this is uh, regress square root of apps on everything else, examine the residual plot, and comment. Uh, so let's go back to this, and so you'll see I'm only allowed to use the training set, so I have the subset equals to train, and if I go look at the residual plot, maybe it looks a bit 
better in terms of heteroscedasticity, we've got some issues to deal with um, with nonlinearities. Um, so we're gonna have to deal with that later. But at least the the you know the it's fairly homoscedastic at this point, fairly. All right. Now, what we really care about doing is building the best prediction uh, method. So I'm going to apply my fitted model to the test set. So what's the test set? Well, it's not the training set. So that's exclamation point train. Now what you're going to see, let's just go look at this for a second, length of y hat. You're going to have 425 cases, which is the number of test set cases. Now if I compute the mean of this, that's going to be the mean squared error on the test set. So 92.75. I'm going to go over to Excel for a second. We're going to call this the full model. 92.75 is our error. Now, we could go study and see which variables are the power predictors. So anything with big T statistics uh, would be our power predictors here. I'm not going to really um, do much with us on that. All right. Well, let's go try stepwise. So question seven, if we go back to the course packet, is we're going to try one method of controlling the complexity, and we'll do a stepwise on it. So let's go back to R, and we'll fit a stepwise. Now I've got a new model here, so I've dropped quite a few of the predictors, much more parsimonious. The question is, does this do better? So let's go apply the second model, fit2, to the test data. Then find the mean squared error. And you're going to see it's gotten better. So 91.15. So let's go over to Excel and just take notes. This is stepwise. So stepwise, you can see, has reduced the error. So we must have been capitalizing on chance with that previous model. Um, and, and so the stepwise allows us to, um, you know, one way of, of uh, reducing the complexity. Well, question eight says, well, now go try a ridge regression. So ridge regression's a little bit more complicated. Um, remember, GlimNet does not take formulas. You, you, the only thing it'll take is a matrix of x's and a vector of y's. Well, there's a function called model.matrix which creates a, uh, a matrix. So is.matrix uh, x is going to be true. And you're going to see x has uh, you know, all 777 rows with 18 columns. Uh, the first column is going to be an intercept in this thing. So if you do a head on x, you're going to see the first column is a column of ones, which gives you the intercept. All right, now with that, um, I'm going to go pass it to fit.ridge. Let's make the screen a little bit bigger here. So alpha equals zero means where I'm doing ridge regression, and I'm only giving it the training cases. All right. Um, now we need to find the optimum amount of shrinkage. And so we're going to do that using cv.glimnet, using only the training data. Okay, so I'll pass this. And... The optimum amount of shrinkage is about 2.63, whatever. All right, so that's my lambda min, if you will. So let's go apply this you know, fitted model with that amount of shrinkage. So notice I'm, I'm passing a, an additional parameter to predict, which is how much shrinkage do I want to do? And you're going to see... I'm applying this to the test set, so not training. So now I have my y hat vector, this y hat vector. Let's just um, see how, how big it is. You're going to see it's 425 cases again. And now we can find out how it does on the test set. And what you're going to see is that things have gotten quite a bit better. So 84.55. So ridge is winning right now, 84.55. Let me add the other five, not that it really matters that much. And it does substantially better than stepwise and this you know, full model where we didn't do any uh, shrinkage. 
Well, question nine said, do the same thing for a lasso. So how do we do a lasso? It's exactly like the ridge. In fact, we can use the same model matrix. The only thing that's gonna be different is we're gonna set alpha equal to one. All right, uh, let's go look at our, you know, find our, our optimal amount of shrinkage with, with uh, cv.glimnet. Let's go apply it to the test set and see how we've done. So the answer is 89.47, and let's just go keep track of that. And so what I conclude here is that Ridge is the winner. Uh, Lasso comes in second. Stepwise is third, and the, the worst model is just basic OLS. All right. Now, let's go back to the course packet for a second, and you're going to see step 10 is do the improved model. We have some nonlinearities to deal with. So that, that showed up in that residual plot. So one thing I could do is just make a big, um, uh, this is probably, that was probably not a good idea. Uh, it's complaining. Um, I've got a for loop that will, I think we, let's, let's, I'd love for this to run. Here are some scatter plots of each x variable against the square root of apps. And some of these you can see have some diminishing returns like acceptance. Um, I don't see any diminishing returns here or here. I see something with F undergrad. So, so the point is that some of these are going to require some transformations, and it looks like I need diminishing returns. So one way to, to handle this is let R decide. So let's go back to uh, R, and um, I'm going to start with nothing. And now I've added some transformations for all those variables that I thought needed diminishing returns. So how do I get diminishing returns? Well, something like the square root of the log, and since I don't really know which one I want to use, I'll just pass them both and let stepwise uh, decide. So you're going to see I did the same thing for enrollment, I did the same thing for uh, F undergrad, and, hand, and a handful of other ones. All right, so let's go fit stepwise. Now let's go apply it to the test set and see how we did. And the answer is we did way better. Look at this, 40.99. So this is, uh, let's just say with transforms. So you, you really need to address these nonlinearities. If you address the, lin the nonlinearities, you're going to see the error gets cut by uh, more than half. All right, so that's a big deal. Well, what would happen if we did the same thing? So you're going to see I've, I've added the same transformations, but we do a ridge regression instead. So I've just fitted the, uh, fit the model, go find the optimal lambda value, go apply it to the test set. And how did I do? The answer is pretty well but not as well as stepwise. My goodness, stepwise is, uh, is beating ridge. Well, let's try lasso now. So I'll go fit the exact same model with a lasso, find the optimal uh, amount of shrinkage. We are going to um, apply it to the test set. And what you're going to see is we do even better yet using lasso. So the best of all possible models is a lasso with these transformations. Now, uh, I think we've, we've seen kind of an important point here. You got to deal with um, nonlinearities. And if, if you, you know, there's very little difference between these different regularization methods. Um, <clears throat> but with or without transformations is a big deal. So we got to take care of that. Um, and then, you know, in, in general, you try a lot of data mining models and take the one that has the best out-of-sample prediction error, and in that case, it's the lasso.
Okay, so that's a good illustration of, of a, using all these methods together.